I'm Randy and I make candy and tonight I'm making 100 grand bars. Stick around. <music> Greetings my confectionery compadres and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. Before we get started, I have an update to last week's episode, Payday Bars. As always, my mother sent me a text saying that she enjoyed the episode, because, you know, moms have to do that. She also said that candy corn and peanuts eaten together taste just like payday bars. Now, while I love my mother and would never doubt her word, I can't just let that pass without a test. I just happen to have some candy corn and peanuts on hand, so slanche va. Well, doggone it. <laughs> Mom, once again, you're right. Compadres, ignore last week's episode. If you want a payday bar, just eat some candy corn and peanuts. First Butterfingers, then Thanksgiving dinner, now payday bars. Is there anything candy corn can't do? For those of you unfamiliar with 100 grand bars, just imagine a Nestle's Crunch Bar wrapped around a hunk of caramel. They're quite tasty and super easy to make. As always, I'd love to hear about your results if you decide to make your own 100 grand bars, as well as suggestions for other recipes you'd like to see in future videos. For this recipe, you'll need 15 caramels, 200 grams of sweetened condensed milk, one quarter cup of butter, one cup of milk chocolate wafers or chips, and one third cup of Rice Krispies or something similar. In this case, the something similar is Cocoa Krispies, because that's how I roll. You'll also need a saucepan, a spoon or spatula, a candy thermometer, some jars for the caramel, a cutting board, some parchment, and one or two precision dipping utensils. Okay, let's make some candy. In a small pan over medium heat, add 200 grams of sweetened condensed milk and one quarter cup of butter. Stir until the butter has melted. Then add 15 Kraft caramels and turn the heat to medium-low. Stir this continuously so the caramels don't burn. If we take it off the heat now, we have soft caramel filling. But that's too soft for what we're making tonight. We need a little more chew. So once the caramels are fully melted, insert a candy thermometer and cook until the caramel reaches the low end of the firm ball stage, right around 242 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour the caramel into some jars and let it come to room temperature. If you already have some of the soft caramel filling, you can just toss it in the pan and heat it to around 242 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's cooled, take some caramel and form it into a small rectangle. Continue until you have as many as you'd like. Temper the chocolate and mix in the crispies. Dunk a piece of caramel in the chocolate and coat it completely. Then place it on the lined cutting board. Continue this with the rest of the caramels. During this process, I noticed that the dipped caramel was unacceptably devoid of crispies, so I went back and added a little bit to each bar. And then, when I thought I was finished, I had the idea to go back and add some crispies as a topping. This will add more crunch, plus I think they look a little bit nicer this way. I had a little chocolate crispy combo left over, so I just poured it out onto the parchment for a little Nestle crunch action. And that's it! Okay, let's give it a try. Slanche va! Oh yeah. Chocolate and caramel are always a great team, and with the added crispy crunch, it's a total win. I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear me say that you really ought to try these. Oh, and a little bit of trivia. When it was created, back in the mid-60s, this was called the $100,000 bar. 
unless you lived in South Africa, where it was called the $100 million bar. Inflation? If you enjoyed your time here in the Candy Kitchen, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for sticking around, and I hope you'll join me next time. I just happen to have some candy corn and peanuts on hand, so... Dang it. <laughs> okay, let's give it a try. Nope, let's not. <laughs>